In this tutorial, I'm going to show you how to create a data disk like you see here. You can see how nicely the reflections kind of shift and move as the viewing angle changes as if it was a real compact disk or a DVD or something similar to that. I'll be using Unity for this demonstration, but the techniques involved are quite simple and will work for a lot of different engines. The asset pack that will allow you to follow along with this tutorial can be downloaded from this URL. I'm going to start off by showing you how the relevant assets were made in Genetica. The Genetica portions of this tutorial require the Pro edition of Genetica, but the pack does include rendered versions of the textures, so if you don't have Genetica Pro, you can still do the Unity portions of the tutorial without any problem. Or you can grab the Genetica demo from this URL. Start up Genetica and then load the disk texture GTX file. And what you'll find here is a node tree that essentially recreates the shader that we'll be using later in Unity. What it does is it creates an environment map, which then reflects off of a bump map, and that creates these CD-like streaky highlights. And then it adds that to an opacity map, which in this case is essentially just a black image with certain transparent bits, and that's what gives it the CD shape. So if we rendered the entire texture by clicking this button, what we'd get is a fixed CD image, which we could export and use if that's what we wanted, but of course it wouldn't be interactive and the highlights wouldn't change in the game engine. So instead what we're going to do is export each of these three maps, one after the other. Now I also want to point out that if you want to edit these maps, you can double click here, and then make any changes to the maps you want. For example, you can see the bump map is created by combining two similar gradients, and if you mix them in a different way, the CD will create more curvy highlights, which might be an effect you want. Or if you want to change the overall pattern of the CD, you can enter the opacity map and you can make changes to the vector illustration that the opacity is based on. You can see how I made the transparent rim thicker there. I'll undo that. And finally, probably the most interesting thing is you can double click the environment map node here. And then you can select different environment maps and it will really give that CD a variety of different effects. You can make a futuristic disc or a disc that looks like it comes from a different environment and just a lot of interesting effects you can create there. Now let's take a look at how to export the maps. Again, these maps were included in rendered form in the downloadable asset pack, so you don't have to do this, but if you've edited the maps in any way, this is how you'd export them. First click the bump node here, and instead of rendering the entire texture with this button, render just that one node with this button. Click make normal map button here. Again, you will need the pro edition of Genetica to follow along here and change height to 0.5, and then click export to save the normal map, and save it as a ping file. I'm going to click cancel because I've already saved it. Next render the opacity map, and again export that by clicking here. The environment map is exported a little bit differently. Instead of rendering the node with this button, Click the Render Environment Map button. Again, this is in the Pro or Studio edition of Genetica. And this will open up a special dialog that will give you features that are specific to rendering environment maps. For example, if you need it as a mirrored ball format, you can do that, or as a cross or a cube map, you can do that. But in this case, we'll just render it as a latitude longitude map because Unity can accept maps in that format. You can also change the render size here if you need to. And when you're done, under Export Map, click the Standard button, and save it as a ping file. So let's switch to Unity and put this all together. I'm going to start by importing our three assets. I'm going to click Assets, Import New Asset. Then select each of the three maps. Then in the Projects tab, I'll click Create 
material. I'll call that disk material. And for the shader, I'll select reflective bump diffuse. First, we can drag in our diffuse map there. And if you switch the preview type, you can see that's kind of looking disk like. And the next thing we want to do is drag in the reflection cube map. Now, if we drag in our environment map, it won't work. It's not the right format. So we want to convert that, select the environment map. And here for texture type, select reflection. And the default mapping of cylindrical, that will do what we need. So just click apply. And you see here from our environment map, it's automatically split it into the six faces and everything you need to done has done it for us. So we can go back to the material and now we can drag in this new environment map. And you can see it's now been reflected how we expect. Let's get a bigger view. So I'll create a plane here and drag our disk material onto it. And it's already looking more how we want but the reflections aren't very CD-like, so the final thing we can do is go to Material and drag in our normal map. We also want to tweak that slightly. Here, Texture Type, I'll select Normal Map. And then you want to uncheck the Generate from Grayscale and click Apply. And now it's looking much better. You get in the reflections. If it's looking too gritty for you, this might be fine for your application, but if it is too gritty, you can go to the normal map and change it from compressed to true color, and that'll smooth it out a bit. All the basics are in place here without editing a single line of shader code. We have some nice compact disc style reflections on the surface. And the only problem with the shader is, of course, that there are all these black areas. The disk won't merge nicely with our scene unless those are transparent. Now, Unity gives us a ton of shaders. They give us reflective shaders and transparent shaders, but unfortunately they don't give us shader that's both reflective and transparent, so we're going to have to tweak a little bit of shader code to give us that. Fortunately, it's not very difficult because Unity provides all the code for the built-in shaders. You can download it from this URL, so you don't really have to code the shaders from scratch. You can just tweak the ones that are already there. If you download that zip file and extract it, you'll find all the shaders. The one we're using now is Reflective Bumped. And the one we want to merge with it is the alpha diffuse. So basically we want to take the transparency parts of the alpha diffuse and stick it into the reflective bump shader. So in Unity, we'll start by creating a new shader here. And I'm going to call it reflective bump transparent. I'm going to edit that. And the first thing I'll do is I'll just delete the default shader that starts in there. And I'll switch the reflect bump shader that I downloaded from the Unity website. And paste it in there. And to be able to select it within the Unity interface, I need to give it a unique name. So I'll change this to bump diffuse transparent. I'll save that. And back in Unity, you can now select that. It's already been added to the interface, you can select it, and you can see it gives the exact same result because all I did was paste over the identical code. The next little tweak I want to make is see where it says reflection strength there. I want that alpha to also affect the transparency, so just for clarity in the interface, I'm going to change that, that wasn't the right window. I'm going to change that tag from ref strength to ref strength trans. 
save it, and in a few moments, that label will update there. So that's kind of optional, but for clarity, that's a nice thing to do. And now let's just merge the two shaders together. So here we have just the standard reflection shader. And here we have a transparency shader without any reflections. And I'm just going to scan down and see what the differences are and copy them over. First of all, I see the tags are a little bit different. They mentioned transparency. So I'm going to comment that line out with double slashes and then paste in this one here. The next thing I see is that the pragma line mentions alpha while this one does not. So I'm going to copy that over. Again, I'll comment out the old line and paste in the new one. And the final thing I've noticed is that the alpha is set a little bit differently. I've tried it both ways, but it really does look better if you also copy over how the alpha looks from the transparency shader. So I'll save that, go back to Unity. And after that finishes compiling, we now have a reflective transparent shader that we can use in this project and any future projects where we may need it. Before I go, I just really wanted to drive home the point that if you double click the make environment node here and select a different environment and click OK, you can click the render environment map button and swap different environments into Unity that will really change the look of your CD, you can create some really fabulous effects. And the whole point of recreating the shader within Genetica is you can get a nice little preview of what the CD will look like even before you bring the maps into Unity. So if you'd like to find more tutorials, you can do so at our blog at this URL. Thank you for watching.